the meeting to order. It is September 26th, 2023. It's the Hadley Housing Authority Board of Commissioners meeting. It's 11 a.m. The first item on the agenda is agenda adoption changes or regular meeting or items not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Uh, I'm not hearing any, so then still have the approval of the minutes. We do not have minutes for the last uh, meeting. We're wishing uh, Pam Creek a speedy recovery here. Executive Director report. We still, no, not yet. We have to, uh, the, the meeting minutes that we do have that we did not approve last time, we tabled and did this on, is from Thursday, July 25th at your board packet last meeting. Uh, the other meeting uh, minutes we do not have yet is is August the 11th and, of course, September the 12th. So these are the only minutes we need to approve. And we, we were going to last time, but... That's from the July meetings. July 25th. We got those back in July. I don't tell anybody brought those today. But but they okay. were in the packet last... They were in the packet on no, uh, September 12th. Well, if everybody's comfortable, I'll call for a vote to approve the meeting minutes of July 25th. I move that we approve the minutes of July the of July 25th with just a few grammar and stuff like that that I've picked out. There's nothing big that's a problem that I can see. All right. Uh, you, I'll do a second. Second. Any discussion about approving the July 25th, uh, 25th minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'm sorry, Sue, was that the yes? Thank you. Uh, executive director reports. Pamela, financial, Warren. <coughs> we, we also have, if I could say, Last time we did not do the executive director report because she was appearing remotely and not everybody could hear. So we'll have an executive director report for two months in a row. I don't think you all have that in the packet. Well, we were given it in the last, I've got it right here. We were given it in last meeting's packet. So it should have been read and looked at. I'd like, uh, yeah, I'd like to come back to nominating Reese as the board secretary. To I don't oh. have all the papers in front of us that she has in front of us. I'll second that. I'll second that. I'll tell you what. I'll second that. You, you just give me a call a week ahead of time and I'll tell you about right. how to fix it. Hopefully this is not our usual thing to get backed up. I frankly think she'd be a wonderful executive director somewhere myself. So. No. Never happening. Never. Let's move on. Pamela? <laughs> Do you want to adjust that? was a compliment, Lisa. Do you want to address those, that warrant, or would you like to table it? It, it was in your packet. The last, last warrant? Yeah. Were there any issues? No, there was nothing. <laughs> they were they were approved by both the treasurer and the, sec, the second signer. It's good enough for me. I can review them again when I go back. So that would be the warrant or the warrant. Do you have a... Um, yeah, I do. Reese, can you make the... Um, no, uh, no motions? With yes, both let me the make sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll repeat, guys, that um, the only time I expect to hear about the warrant or hope to hear about the warrant is if there's anything unusual. And that usually would mean a large expense that is unusual for that kind of year or that month. Okay, so this is so, when you get your treasurer's report. And I can tell you there's been nothing unusual these past two months, which are the uh, financials that were, were supposed to approve today. Nothing at all unusual. Thank you. Pamela, you want to go ahead? Yeah, if we if, if, uh, make the motion with the dates and the times. Oh, well, just give me a second here. Is this for the warrants or the treasury report? Uh, the warrant report. We okay, haven't got so to the that, treasury report. Yes, yeah, that's correct. The warrant report is for 720 to 720. Remember how we pull them every two weeks, so it's always 720 to 720, but it's for the month, basically the month of July and a little piece of June and stuff like that. Okay, and then 727 uh, was another warrant report. These are all signed by Rich Whitkiss, or initialed by Rich Whitkiss and myself. 
Um, so we, and then up to 8 8 2023, and then to 8 24 2023. Okay, and we need the, um, the dollar amounts for that. Okay. The, the total dollar. So, so 7 20, 2023 is, we're doing it, uh, the report total is $22,236.66. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, I've got to ask you about this. See how this is 720 to 720. This is 720 to 720. They both say they're page one. This is 22,000. Totally for the total. Okay, great. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. That's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure. Then for 720, do we... You yep. want to vote on that? Or? I think you can do them all. Okay. For 727-2023, the total amount is $3,077.24. For 810-2023, the dollar amount is $1,140. No, no, that's a never mind is the report total, and the, these were two dates together, 8-8 to 8-10, sorry about that, it's $14,806.47. And the warrant report for 8-24-2023, just a second. The report total is $25,350.61. Second. Second. I did second. Uh, second it. Rich seconded. In discussion. You said nothing unusual, right? No, there's nothing unusual in here. All in favor of approving the warrant? Aye. 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 And Thank I you. continue to vote no on the warrant. Okay, four to one. <clears throat> no, let's see. Let me, Treasure. I'm sorry, we need down to nine seven. Warrant report. Oh, okay. Okay, so the ninth seventh warrant report is uh in nine twenty one. Nine seven twenty twenty three. There is nothing unusual. Usually I make a note if there is and there's nothing unusual. So had a question? Yep. Yeah. Please. Mm -hmm. On the uh <clears throat> law office of Elena Donald, fourteen hundred and eighty seven dollars. I will not vote, uh, obviously, for the entire warrant as I have been doing that in lieu of the audit that we haven't had. But in that 1487, how much of that uh, was for that hearing of the restraining order on the tenant uh, because of the interference on the window project? How much were That's we charged for that? That's day to day. How much were we charged for That's that? day to day. In the attorney's bill, though. How much we did we not charged? have the invoice here okay. for me to reference. Okay. But I did look at the invoices. I look at every single invoice. Rich looks at every single invoice. There is nothing unusual. <laughs> and and frankly, the commissioner should should not be knowing tenants' legal business with the housing authority. That's inappropriate. I'll just put that only out there. Okay, so back to the warrants. Nine seven. Uh, in the amount, the report total is $3,881.76. So I'm moving that we approve that and 921-2023. Report total 23,800. 96. Thank you. $96.36. I think we need new glasses or we need to plant bigger. Okay. Wait, do I have a second? Uh, I'll do a second on that. No. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? And I vote no again. Four to one. Thank you. Since we haven't had all right. Hey, can, can I just, I have a question. Sure. Sir? Mr. Chapter, you said last meeting, I recall completely that you said you would never bring it up again about an audit if... Then I just vote no, thank you. Okay. I vote no. Is that the Treasury report or the separate Treasury 
We do have the August 31st Treasurer's Report from the yes. Rated Base. Yeah. Showing July 23 and August 23. We don't. Do we have to vote on that? No, it's just for informational yeah. purposes. We do not vote on the Treasurer Report. Do you that? We, we need to mark that off the agenda. Yep. No, it has to, because we have, we have, it's presented. Just so it's always on the. Yes, on. but we're not voting on it. No, nope. it's yeah. got a little B by it. So I'm saying well, it's confusing. Mine does. I have a question on the treasurer's report, though. Uh, I notice now that the people's account is no longer being listed. Uh, but I would like a summary of what actually happened with the people's account. Because, as you know, I do sports officiating. Mm -hmm. And I did bump into Kristen Yazerski, the former uh, treasurer and member of this commission. And she asked me why she was still on the people's bank account. Uh, uh, and I guess there was the People's Bank account people called her. There was some question on a tr questionable transaction. Mm -hmm. And what happened with all that? I'd like a summary of that. Now that I don't see it here anymore, I'm assuming that's all gone. But what was the summary? What was the questionable transaction and why was she still on the account after so we, all these years? Because I mean, we, after weren't all able, these we weren't able to remove her without a board resolution and then changing everyone else's signature card. So since we were re we were closing down the account, we were just closing down the account. The account was still left open because there were still um the we use vendor web, which is a state clearinghouse for automatic payments for that's where our subsidy comes through. It DHCD puts it into this vendor web and then it gets into people's bank. Um and we were trans we transferred that over with a lot of difficulty to the new Greenfield Savings Bank. So it was just lingering, and the questionable transaction was actually an error from vendor web trying to take money out of that. But there was no money. There was no monies in there. And because she was still on the account at the time, that's why the bank called her. We're actually not clear why the bank called her. I couldn't get an order. I she was on the account. I know, but we're on the account too. They they should never have just called her. Oh, I see. Yes. the housing authority. I see. Um, but it is now officially closed. There's no monies. Everything went into Greenfield. Wait, I see. That's right. Mr. Chairman, just curious to know, you know, uh, why we went from East Hampton Bank to People's Bank and now Greenfield Bank. We've been in many different banks. Is there is that? Unusual for a housing authority to move around to different banks. No, we prefer to stay in the same bank, but as a resident of Hadley, the bank is right at the corner here on what's that main drag? <laughs> so was East Hampton when we were in the East Hampton Savings Bank. A long time in the East Hampton Savings Bank. No, they were right here on the corner. Yeah. And then they closed down. And no, they, I mean they, East Hampton yeah. being on the corner of East Street. We were there when Mary was here and then we went to Peoples and now we're in Greenham. They're both you know, right here is that I just wondered. So it's my understanding that the bank we used was right on the corner next to the Dunkin' Donuts. It, it closed, it, it, but before that, it was Peoples. Yeah. So it, Peoples closed down that branch and they went to Greenfield. So we switched to Greenfield because the branch is right there. That's why we did it. Um, and it's unfortunate. It's in Greenfield actually has very limited hours there. It's like nine to 12 and then one to three. Um, they're telling us that they're going to be expanding the hours, but that's not really good because we should never, when we get cash, if a tenant comes in to pay the rent with the cash, we're supposed to go to the bank the same day. So you do want somebody close by, um, but with closing at three o'clock, if somebody comes in at four o'clock, we're, so we're, we are still, we're, we're hoping this works out. They say they're expanding their hours. That would be the explanation. That was a good question. It was, yeah. So, uh, anything for the write-off report? No. Okay. No, that, that was that was last time, unfortunately. Uh, property management. Do, do, but, but did you want to bring it up from last time, the write-off report? No, I think you did. Did we do it? No. We didn't? No. Okay. Do you have it? Okay, just, just a second. I'm like... This is uncollectibles? Yeah. It's money that can't be collected, so it has to be written off. Well, we might be able to collect it, but it comes off the book. We're allowed to get it. It's an accounting um, mechanism to get it off of the books. How much time do they make you wait before you can write it off? Uh, they, they prefer if we do it every quarter. 
Um, but it wouldn't be an active tenant. It would be a tenant that has already left. Um, so if it's a tenant that has passed away, it's, it, it's definitely uncollectible. If it's a tenant that left owing it, we, we do um, report to the um, credit bureaus, and we do use the Department of Revenue to go after <laughs> income tax returns and lottery winnings and any kind of state money that comes through. So this okay. is a 731. The, give me a second to... We, 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 uh, we did not. I, I, I think it might have been. If, okay. if we could just okay. move past that one. I'd yeah, it's, it's, there's nothing we can do about it. It's just a write off. There's, well, yeah, you know. if, there, uh, if I'll bring it back to the board if we need to. Yeah. If we are ever able to collect that money, then great. We'll see it. Okay, so I think we're all done with. I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it is in your report. Your board. It sure. is. Okay. Sorry. So we don't have to announce these numbers for the record. Nope. So it's um for the we have two to be written off. It would be uh four hundred and ninety-five dollars and then two thousand seven hundred and ninety-four dollars and thirty-three cents. Both are six six seven tenants that have left, and the amount owed is three thousand two hundred and eighty-nine dollars and thirty-nine cents to be written off. And chances are we'll never be able to collect those two, or we might be able to. With the Department of Revenue, I will be able to collect it. It may take a while, but we'll get it. That's good, because so, we sure need the money. Yeah. Then why do, why do we need to vote for money to off? Uh, for the accounting procedure. So so yeah. to take it off of our books and to put it into that um, other category. It's DHCD allowed under budget guidelines. It says we have to vote to write it off the books. Then who will be tracking that if we're able to collect it? That's a substantial amount of money. It is a substantial. So who's going to be tracking that if if this gets written off? Mm -hmm. Then where's the record that if we try to collect this and we are successful in collecting that it comes back on the books? Who's, who's keeping those? So it, it's a, I can find out which line it goes to a different line item. So it comes out of TAR tenant account receivables and it goes into I believe a, a different line item. Yeah, I'm saying budget. My concern is that it gets lost. Oh yeah. After you've written off this substantial amount of money, that if the money does come in, then you know. You don't have the accounting for it. There's not. Yeah. It'll be. There's not a connect. There's not a connect from the accounting. It is another. It's another line item. If right. you wanna, um, if we wanna move on, I could text Gary the pace to get the line item number. Yeah. We'll, but it does stay on the on the. Well, uh, the the point is is that when monies come, say you get a check from Department of Revenue because you were able to collect it mm -hmm. that way, when it gets deposited, the accountant puts it in the appropriate line item for right. it. Okay, it's been received. She has to have a place to put it. And then of course, Gary DePace does all his to. Right. And yeah. reported, we report it to um, DHC or EO yeah. HLC. So every, every quarter we have to report our tenant account receivables to the Department of Housing or the Executive Office of Housing. And um, we get, of uh, audit finding if our account receivable is too high. So there's yeah. they do allow you to write off debt once the person is no longer at the housing authority. Okay. With, um, with my prior experience, uh, things do not get written off until all avenues have been fully and completely exhausted. Mm -hmm. If this is different from the uh, norm that I'm used to, uh, I, I guess then you have to vote that. I'm going to vote no because just in prior practice, I don't want this to get lost because this is a substantial amount. Yeah, and we're and we're aggressively going out there. Well, if you're saying that the uh, oversight agency, the yellow CHD, mm -hmm. QRS, right, <laughs> whatever, if, if, if they feel that this needs to be written off, that's not according to what I've been used to. So, uh, and I have to vote no to write it off, but you can vote. Okay. Moving on. So, uh, do you want we need do to you vote? Make a vote. Uh, make a motion in a second and then vote. Uh, the treasurer's report and the warrants or? Uh, the write off report. Oh, yeah. 
We don't vote uh, on treasurer report. We, we just vote on the write-off report. Yeah. Yes, you have to vote. Yeah. You do. Otherwise, we can't. We can't write it off. Okay. I move that we uh, accept the write-off report and write off three thousand two hundred eighty-nine dollars and thirty-nine cents. Have a second. No. I'll second that. Discussion. All in favor. Aye. 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 No. No. And no. Two numbers. Three yeses. <coughs> Moving on. <coughs> Property management reports. Sorry, I'm just here. Do we have a property manager right now? Did we do the receivables? We have one coming. Yep, she was she, just pending um, that room check. And Mary, Mary Billion has been taking that spot. So we have the vacancy report. So this is the vacancy report as of 831. And um, it shows four vacancies at Golden Court and one at Berkeley. The one at Berkeley is a capital project. I, I don't have that. Yeah, you do. It's on the second side of the uh, account receivables. Oh, two yeah. side copies. Two side. Oh, we're, saving paint. we're saving trees. Yeah. All right, I got it. So these are our vacancies. This is our vacancies. Yeah. So what? What's the? Uh, if I may, since this is the appropriate spot, uh, the newspaper article twenty three hundred vacancies uh, statewide and Hadley and uh, Belton Town. Here it is. Uh, here it is. Um, do we need to point of order and move to that commissioner discussion? Okay, that's fine. Yeah. 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 We'll come back to it. Um, sure. Yeah, I actually have some um, information for you to support your So we, at, as of August 31st, it was, um, we're at 10%. So it's one, since August, we have leased up one, we have one new tenant, and then, but as of today, we've got possession of that apartment um, that we, we have not had possession of. So now it's a wash. We're still at four. Um, and then, as I said, the Burke Way one the, is a is a fished project. That's with our capital. So we have contractors coming in using our capital money to to rehab that unit. It was quite um, lot of, a lot of wear and tear. It needed to be done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And how long is that taking to renovate? So that's part of this problem that Commissioner Chadwick just alluded to. That it's because because it's a project too. It's out of the hands pretty much of the housing authority. You have engineers involved and maybe the RCAT regional team, but the executive office is involved. Um, everybody's got a ton of projects. So it is being worked on. There, We've already had um, the, the scope of work has been done. Um, it's We've had lead to our, not lead, the asbestos testing done. So that should be moving along. But I, I would say we've got a good couple of more months over there with... Well, the other one that we had last year, there was a capital, another Berkeley Capital Project, and that took a really long time because we were dealing with materials not being able to be shipped, manufacturers, transport. It was a mess. So how do you, I do not at this point recall how many months from the time there was a move out to the time we were able to. It, it was a long time, and that one was not a fish project. That one we oh, ended up geez. using both contractors and our own in-house staff. Um, the supply chain has gotten better. Okay. Um, with, we do have some delay still on appliances. Appliances are still a problem, uh, but it's, it's getting better. It's just better. there's a shortage of architects and yeah. contractors. and So, so do, you do you remember kind of how long it took that John, time? I don't either. It was yeah. a long, long time. It was. Yeah. yeah. So architects get involved with uh, renovating an apartment? If you can believe it, architects sometimes get involved to replace a floor. When the state gets involved, the cost yeah. just, it's its a little bit crazy. A little bit. But that is reaching the uh, public attention front page news. So Absolutely. And uh, yeah, someone get it. It, can I can I ask another question about sure. we, what triggers DHCD or executive office to get involved? Is it a my memory is that it's fifty thousand bucks. 
So if you have a project that you're anticipating is going to take more than 50,000 bucks, that triggers our cap and everything else or $10,000 triggers our cap. Oh, that's why architects are involved. Mm -hmm. But they, but they do allow us to, um, because yeah. we have staff that can assist with that. Yeah, they do. We do have some leeway. Like I'm just completing a project in the Amherst that was $60,000 that we did ourselves. Yeah, okay. Um, we pulled in Belgian Town too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we can um and in the past we've always you know, you'll get a um a house doctor from the executive office, which is kind of like a um it's a architect light. Um and you get assistance. Even with this window project here, there's folks from the executive office walking around to make sure that the contractors are doing what they need to do and everything else. Do you just say you have one unit in Amherst that's going to cost $16,000 to clean up or renovate? That we just, no, it was a project. It was a project. Yeah. No, I had a, I had a duplex in Belchertown that I, that I renovated, which was truly cosmetic. There, we're not talking windows, roof. We got half of the, of the um, amount sided and, um, but, you know, paint, new cabinetry and things like it was three hundred thousand dollars for two units because it it of everybody that got involved. So prevailing wage, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, tenants account receivable report. Account receivable. Yeah. So that is a really high amount, um, and we are working aggressively to get that under control, trying to get folks into. Sure. Uh, repayment agreements. We do have some pending litigation with several folks um, who are refusing. So we're 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 hoping refusing to pay their rent. Mm -hmm. Yep, and to get into a repayment agreement. So we do need folks when when folks are late on their rent. Things happen. We understand that things happen, um, and that's kind of the beauty of of public housing is that you can make make allowances. Um, and so we try to get people into a repayment agreement, which allows them to break up that monthly rent that they're behind and pay a little bit each month so that they get they get back on track. The um, executive office looks favorably on that. That doesn't it wouldn't count um, adversely against the housing authority for that. It doesn't count adversely against the tenant. It's a it's a win win for everybody. But a lot of people just refuse to do it. They refuse to sign a repayment agreement. Yeah, and pay their rent. Some people refuse to pay. So let's take it a step further with this receivable balance increasing every month. If something happens to that individual that has refused to pay rent, their life comes to an end. Yeah. Then are we looking to write this amount off? Unfortunately. There's no way to collect it, is there? Well, well, you can go against the estate or any of their assets they may or may not have. But the bottom line is, what efforts are we making to collect this? Because this is this is increasing every month. It yeah. is, yeah. And it's getting to be a very substantial number. Yeah. It's sort of like the write-off we just, or you all voted for thirty-three hundred dollars. That's right. right. But we don't we don't really have any choice. We have to write it off because those are the rules and the regs, right? Well, the write off is, but for this, what, what happens here is so we have the rent collection policy. We follow the rent collection policy. Um, folks are given notice. They, if it's of over 30 days, they start racking up late fees. Um, and then they're, they're asked to come and talk to the housing authority even before that point to explain what's going on. And we try to get them into a repayment agreement. I'm aware of two repayment agreements that happened this month. Um, this was supposed to be updated to let you know how many uh, repayment agreements are. Going forward, I'll break that down to let you know how much the dollar amount of repayment agreements. Um, so we had that, um, we assist residents to get raft money or any kind of assistance from other folk places. Um, and then there's the, the legal, then we go after the legal option. I'm a little confused on the numbers then because the late fees have also been going up, but That's they right. look like in this month, they are coming down, but the, the rents not being paid would indicate that late fees are going to be added on. So these numbers are not kind of coming together for me. Um, they're not paying their rent, yeah. so they would get a late fee. Yeah. 
And I would think the late fees would be going up, but the previous report had something like four or five hundred dollars of, I don't have it with me, but the late fees now have come down, but the rent, the rent receivables are going up. That's not making sense. So if the tenant um, just will go into the rent, um, into a repayment agreement, late fees stop. So we so they don't get any more late fees. Um, we often make agreements to get rid of previous. So late the late fees. fees that have been on here in prior months, people have paid those late fees. Well, this is just the one month. So this is telling me that we've got four tenants in six and seven that have a late fee, and one tenant at seven oh five that has a late fee because that's just for this month. So we've this this is. Do you have a total of what the late fees are? They're they're twenty five dollars each. So no, no, do you have a total of because prior months they were higher. They were higher on late fees. Because there were more people that were... So those years. have been correct? That's correct. Collected. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. They have. So I'll tell you that 667, so this, and so this is uh, public knowledge, but of course I won't use any names. The hop, the apartment that we took possession of today was through court court proceedings. And that dollar amount is close to $8,000. Um, yeah. So that's a huge chunk of that. So that we will be going after it um, and we have a very good chance of getting that amount of money because of what the person purchased with the money that they didn't spend on the rent okay so there it is it is a win-win for tenants to get into a repayment agreement because it it helps ease because it's, i'm sure it's stressful it's stressful to owe money mm -hmm. um, but it stops the the late fees it gets their account back into a re, into good, good order and they don't have to go through the, the housing court for, at all. So there's that. That's not a vote. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, facilities. So facilities, as you can see, we it was a busy, busy month, okay. um, which we, we addressed a little bit in the meeting that you couldn't hear me. Didn't you all about that? <laughs> I don't know if you stand goose left. We have a new person. Not yet. No, we had somebody in queue or somebody that was going to, and then they changed their mind. Okay. <laughs> so, but it's um, I'm handling it right now along with Perry, and Mary and Kyle. And again, I I am very experienced at capital projects, as is Mary. So we're we're moving right along, and we have our cat assistants. So Matthew Blanchett Blanchard Blanchett is our capital assistance, regional capital assistance person. Um, Tom Boyer from the executive office, they're all assisting. Um, so we ran this project all by ourselves and we did great <laughs> with, with those folks' help. Um, and you can see how busy maintenance was. Um, and even at the administrative staff, we were here every single day that they were working. Um, maintenance was here from the time they started until after the guys left. Everyone has um, brand new windows. They had their air conditioners put in. They have brand new blinds. Um, the project is now 100% done. Well, we're coming back on Friday for a walkthrough. So that's okay. the um, that's the other part is, and that will be that will be a whole slew of folks. It will be the architect. It will be the contractor, the subcontractor, myself, the tenants, maintenance. Um, for those tenants in the in the. Um, you've gotten notice that we're coming on Friday. Um, I'm going to come around with another notice too. It makes sense why we're in there just to take your air conditioners out unless you have a reasonable accommodation um, to keep it in, but we'll take it out at the same time so you're not disturbed again. But then so today on Friday they'll go through and they'll make sure that everything is done to the specs. I know we have a, a cracked window that in one unit. Um, there's some um, cracking underneath on the walls, and all of that has to be fixed before they are paid the final final check. Sounds like you're almost there, though. Oh, oh yeah, it's, 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 and, it, and yeah. it looks beautiful. I think it looks beautiful. That's great. Will they be doing any patching and painting? Because there was some... They have to, yeah, they yeah. would have okay. to do that. So that would all be scheduled. So I, I would say we probably got another, we have another three or four weeks potentially before we have to pay. Well, please extend the thanks of the board to the staff that's put in whatever extra time they has and to the crew and all that. And I consider it a done project if you're just patching walls. So yeah, that's good with, for all of you. What's the percentage usually goes down? Mm -hmm.
So this we usually do like halfway through we pay we pay half and then we'll pay three quarters and then there's a hold back. But this time because the project moved so quickly, they didn't submit any bill. So it's uh, it's going to be just one final. It'll be one payment, which is a payment. No, um, <laughs> and remember we do have um, CPA money from the town too. So it was um, it's definitely a, a win win. And now we want new doors. Good. In the front, so <laughs> so CPA likes it <clears throat> that require it that they like an update, of course. Yes, yeah. when, when the project's done or, or progressing. Mm -hmm. So, the you know, or, or Barry or somebody, I, I you, you'll you make sure they get yeah. a letter. Yep, it's um, we've been uh emailing with Mary Thayer, uh, Bruce, yep. Bruce keeping sure. her up to date. Yep. Um, so absolutely, and then we do the housing authority does have a representative on the board too. I keep them all up to date. Oh, okay. <laughs> But we will, we will, I think it would be nice if we had a nice, a nice letter or card and then I could leave it here and all the tenants signed to thank the CPA. Wow, that would be too. Yeah. I'm telling, the CPA would love that. Yeah. Uh, Mary Thayer will be coming out to take some pictures. Yeah. I, I, we need to tell her not to put the apartment number, you know, to blur yeah. out the apartment number, but she'll be coming out to take pictures and then they put it up on their website. Yeah. I, I think they came up. We've heard we, we've only had one or two complaints about the blinds as opposed to a shade, but other than that, um, and I don't know if you noticed too the the new trim in here too. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it really came out beautiful. Nice. Brightens the room. Well, what else? We have window update, work one reports. Yep, that was. So, in, yep. I think we just covered all. Okay. Commissioner's discussion. Uh, we are getting behind in talking about policies, which may be my fault. We, I didn't get it on the agenda, but you guys are ready to go with an uh, initial policy review by the entire board. Reviewing what you're working on. Yeah, so I'd like to review them first to make sure they're applicable um, with our, in that they follow the lease. The and, you know, office has, yeah. That's fine. With me. And the reason for that is, is that Pamela is the expert about all the rules, laws, and regulations. She has to be knowledgeable about what the town requires and what the state requires and executive office requires. So she has to go through these first. I do, uh, Rich and I have been working hours and hours and hours, and we do have the fifth draft, and it's ready for Pamela to review and, uh, you know, put, give some input. So you think by next, by the next meeting, you'll uh, have a chance to review? Yes, this has just been a busy month with the project. Yeah. <laughs> so right, so yeah. I'll put it on the agenda for next month then, right? Yeah. And Reese, weren't you supposed to do the common area of the grounds policy this, the two this week? Yep. So that's the one. So when we get together next time, can we do two at a time and not get inundated with? No, you could do you could do whatever we have available. Well, because we, we can't. Uh, uh, I thought we voted on the two grounds and the common area. I haven't. Yeah, but, but I mean, since we're not doing them this week, when we get together next month, wouldn't it be better just to do two or three at a time? Okay. For discussion. My understanding is you'll put them on the agenda for next meeting. I right. Think what, and I, we also have the option of having a special meeting to review policies, whoever would like to attend that, okay? Which uh, might make sense if it's quite a bit of discussion. I don't know. I don't know. It depends on what you're If you're willing to come to an extra meeting or not, oh. but we would need your... Yeah. I think what Commissioner Oppenheimer, if I might, you, what you're saying is you'd like to limit it to two. So, so we can really focus tell us and not... Oh, yeah. them. we yes, right. might just want to take one at a time. It's fine. But, you okay. know, it, it doesn't matter to me. Whatever the board wants to do, okay. it's ready. So, Pamela, will you let us know, no pressure, that if you do get a chance to go through them, yeah. uh, the ones that you've approved or think are close enough, could you alert me or the board that um, those are ready? Copies of those are ready to be picked up at the office. Yes. And yeah. get a head start before the meeting, uh, reviewing them. So maybe we can get them all reviewed by you and us by the next meeting or the one after. Don't you think it would be better to give them to the board members first before they come to you? Because they have worked on these policies. 
with the idea I understand with us looking at them after and then going to you. If you're oh, approving okay. them with before we're looking at them, no, no, we're sure. not part and party of it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Pamela is giving input about rules, laws, and regulations, which I'm pretty sure the board is unaware of. So it does you no good to go through these ahead of time when they haven't even be, been fixed with rules at the state. The rules, laws, and everything. So uh, basically, Pam is going to make sure none of them are opposed. You know, yeah. So then they're going to come to us after Pamela. So well, it, it doesn't matter. It's just there that we need a draft. You will receive the, the, the draft, and then all the comments from the board members to change things you all have, everybody has input. They still have to be voted on. Pamela's going to have to review our changes to whatever we don't like. Sure, I understand period. that. But so I thought they were going from Reese to Pamela, then to us. That's, that's what, what we said. But so when, uh, to me, I thought it made more sense to go from you to the board, yeah. then to Pamela. Well, but just because we'll, right. that, what, that would be a different order that we don't traditionally do. And what would then I'd be having to say to the entire board, wait, you can't. You yeah. can't, just as an example, you can't change the lock on somebody's unit. That's against the law. Right. So it would be something like that. But what should, what I would like to do is Reese and Richard as the subcommittee would give me the policy. I'll look through it to make sure that it's, that it's applicable to local and state laws. Yeah. Um, and then also if it's a, if it's a policy that involves the tenants, I'd like to have a tenants meeting right. to review it with the tenants. To get, so get their yeah. and, and then the board gives their final stamp you know, okay. um, because it's it, when it involves the tenants we do have that obligation to talk to them as well i didn't realize that was so unless it was a tenants organization that the tenants have a say it's, no it's, it, it, it was you made, really do yeah you yeah. the tenants have a say that that was made clear in, in meeting minutes from the get -go. So I'm sure I get it right. You guys will give your draft to Pamela, then she'll have us look at it, then the tenants will finalize. Uh, she already has the draft, and as soon as she can, we'll look at it for the... Okay. okay. Before uh, yes. Anything else the commissioners would like to discuss today? Yes. Uh, the open meeting law complaint. Okay. Um, the Attorney General rendered their opinion on September 11th to us as a board. I don't agree with the opinion. It's by the Assistant Attorney General. Okay. Um, I don't agree with the opinion, but the opinion is obviously going to stand. But it does say that within 30 days of receipt of this determination, which was September 11th, the uh, board may publicly release the emails by reading their content during a meeting and listing the emails in the meeting minutes. Am I correct on what I'm reading here? That's what it's. That's my understanding. Point That's what it said. So what I would like to do is read the email that came from the DHCD from Evelyn. No, it would just be the email from you and from John. Those two days of emails are what's required. Well, I think what is also necessary is the reason that we did our emails and there was no deliberation and we had asked for months and months about a valid contract and then it was confirmed on December 16th by the DHCD that we did not have a contract. Well, she didn't confirm. That, that's up for debate. But I, I, It's in an email and that's what I need to read besides the response that John and I gave. Uh, you, I, well, I, I need allow, I need closure to this. I would allow. I believe, just from my opinion, is I believe that Commissioner Ch uh, Chadwick should read all three so that it's full disclosure of what they were responding Thank to. Thank you. I disagree with the interpretation, but that's not what the open meeting law violation was about. It was about potential deliberation. Chair. So I do think it's in context. It keeps it in context. Uh, I'd like to uh, have you go ahead here. Well, Mr. Chair has something to yes. say regarding that. Uh, it's not, number one, it's not on the agenda. Number two, if, Harry, you're going to read these emails out, and I'm not quite sure what you're, why you think you should, I'm going to ask, I am going to ask for you also then to read the Attorney General's judgment. 
Fun. The entire thing. It's already put into the minutes of last week. It is not, sir. I believe it was. It, it was. I believe that we voted yes, but there are that. no minutes, and for it to be valid, it has to be posted on the municipal website. Read very carefully what the attorney general's office says, and so until it's posted on the municipal website. Okay, I don't post the minutes. Do you normally it, post the minutes, or does uh, panel? We don't post the minutes on the website. So this is a separate posting on the website that they asked? Uh, it, it's, it has to be attached to the minutes for last meeting, which was uh, September the 12th. That's... Those minutes are not complete, so nothing is attached to those minutes. And for it to meet the criteria from the AG's office, it has to be published on the municipal okay. website. I remember clearly asking that the letter from the Attorney General's office would be included with the minutes from the last meeting. If they if they need to be posted as well, then that's something which I don't do. So. Okay, hold up. Well, we have to, is the point. The board is directed to do this. Okay. So it, it doesn't matter if you don't do it or whatever. It so we has could, to be done. We could post that on the housing authority, the the housing authority website. It has to be on the okay. Let me just well no, here you've got it right there. Read it. Read what? Okay, I'll read the it. The attorney generals? Or the Let, email no, the on, email that promulgated promulg promulg why we responded. For the reasons stated above, we find the board violated the open meeting law. With Mr. Allen and Mr. Chadwick, etc. Uh, hold up. I need new glasses. When it says Mr. Allen and Mr. Chadwick deliberated, we did not deliberate. Okay, it doesn't matter what you say, it only matters what it is. I'm sorry. It does matter what you say. Then you have to get an attorney and appeal it. Um, because until you do, this is law right here. We order the board's immediate and future compliance with the open meeting law and caution that a future similar violation may be considered evidence of an intent to violate the law. Additionally, we order the board to public release, publicly release the December 17th and 18th emails. That's the ones from Mr. Chadwick and Mr. Allen within 30 days of receipt of this determination on September the 10th, uh, 11th. If it is not already done so, the board may publicly release the emails by reading their content during a meeting and listing the emails in the meeting minutes or by referencing the emails during a meeting and posting the emails along with the minutes of the meeting on the municipal website. So here it can can read them into the record today. Yeah, or you don't have to. You just reference them, and then we can put them on the website to the for the Yeah, so you don't have to read them. My interpretation is you don't have to read them. You have to reference them. I am asking just just as I just as other organizations who've been found like the select board one time was found found in violation of open meeting law. And the attorney general's office required them to read the entire finding into the record, into the public record for the. That's what I would ask you to do. But if I'm going to read the entire attorney general's finding, I'm going to start with the response that we got from the DACD. John's and my response to that, and then you want me to read all of this? I'm fine with that. I have to bring closure to this. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So if that's the desire, I'm prepared to well, do Well, let's that. ask the chair. What do you it's more than the Attorney General's office is asking for. What they're asking for is you to reference this and then to be included in the minutes, which are then posted for the public. That's enough for me. If you prefer to read the entire document, I won't stop you. I'm not asking for that. The reason that John and I responded, because for months we were asking where the contract was. We then, on December 16th, 
I got we John did as the chair got notice from the DHCD that they did not have a signed valid contract. Then John responded, and I responded that maybe we shouldn't have our meeting, we should postpone it, whatever. That was not deliberation. It was informing everyone that we did not have a contract. So you I know, disagree with the opinion, but the opinion stands, but we need to follow, as Reese points out, the law. We have 30 days from September 11th, so October 11th, to handle this issue and put it behind us. Yeah. Because there's not going to be any more emails and anything. Right. You deserve closure. So, so how do we close this the most efficient way? I'm going to defer to you and I'll do what you would like us to do. I want closure to this. I'm not going to go back to the AG's office. Their opinion stands. I don't agree with their opinion, but I'm not going to debate their opinion. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. You tell me how we resolve this within the 30 days that we have. As chair, I tried to read it from the standpoint of a chair. I wasn't on the board at that time. Right. But I tried to read it as a warning and as instructions on I, how to yeah. behave properly yeah. in the I future. Got I got it. So I read it three times. <clears throat> And I still couldn't see what they were considering deliberation. I was surprised that they were okay with the fact that we were operating without a signed contract. That wasn't a problem for them. But the fact that you guys discussed not coming to a meeting, that was a problem for them. And then I realized, wait a minute, it wasn't the, maybe it wasn't the fact that Mr. Allen and Mr. Chadwick had discussed not coming to a meeting. Maybe it was the fact that they let Mr. Witkus know that they weren't planning to come to a meeting. So now there's three commissioners in the line of discussion or in the general discussion of two commissioners not coming to a meeting because they weren't comfortable about not regarding the contract being signed or not. So then I thought, oh, so maybe it's the fact that Richie was the third commissioner to be part of this dialogue. Well, there was no that dialogue other than information to our chairman at the time yeah. that we so, didn't have a contract. But go ahead, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. I feel like giving a warning to my fellow commissioners. If you guys have a problem with something that I do or another commissioner does or Pamela does and you've just discussed it among two of you, don't email me saying that we've had a, we have a problem with something that somebody did and we want to let you know that we may not be coming to a meeting. That makes me feel like, if I read this properly, all of a sudden I'm the third, the mm -hmm. borrow. That's part of the dialogue. And I may not be interpreting what she wrote properly. Um, the other possibility is that just saying that you may not be coming to a meeting and agreeing with each other is, a, is considered deliberation. I mean, it was a shock to me to find this uh, finding, and I don't understand it. But uh, I'm going to let Harry go ahead here, hear me if that's okay with you. So I'm okay with you, so okay with you referencing it, as we've already done today. And then it being included with the minutes, minutes, and then the minutes being published as PDFs along with this document uh, on the housing website. That's a public, uh, a public posting. So it, if it, we yeah, provide, it, if we, we are a public house. agency. It is our, it is our official website. It is. It doesn't matter because the AG's office says it has to be posted on the municipal, the town's website. We can, I can give it to Jess and Mr. So, Harry, what I would what so I would what do you suggest to bring closure to this, mm -hmm. and we move forward? We understand what the AG is saying, and don't do it again, and be aware of what you put in print. I already wrote you. I already wrote you, brother. Yeah. Um, it says here that within thirty days, the board must publicly release the emails by reading their content during a meeting and listening to the emails in the meeting minutes and listing the emails in the meeting minutes or by referencing the emails during a meeting as we've done and posting the emails along with the minutes of the meeting on the municipal website. Now to me the municipal website is the Hadley Housing Authority website. That is our municipal website. Uh, if, if, uh, if you want to sue to have it on the town website then go ahead and sue me. But uh, Okay. Well, I think when they say the municipal website, that is the Hadley Housing Authority website, is my interpretation. 
You know, this whole letter from them, I think, is a disgrace. You have the emails here from John and me. So I, I, I didn't get a copy. The Housing Authority oh. did not get a copy of this. But I, what I would respectfully suggest is that, it, as what Chairman Moshkin is saying, it's absolutely been re um, acknowledged in an open meeting. It's part of our meeting minutes. And that we take the entire AG finding, all three emails, the one from DHCD, and the two responses and post those on the housing authority website. And I will check with the town okay. to see if the town wants, and then people can read it and see what everybody else is saying. And that will resolve and bring closure. Yes. It will. Yeah. It will. And you were saying yeah. that this is a disgrace from the attorney general. You didn't finish. Well, as I do the best <laughs> as I can, I, I got a lot of fancy education, but when I, I'm not a lawyer, but when I read this, um, I feel embarrassed to be an American, to be honest with you, but I don't want to go on about that. And I think posting it publicly for anybody who's interested enough will vindicate you and John and understand you had a problem with the status of the contract. So you discussed not coming to a meeting and that if that's enough to get the attorney general spending their time on the case, you know, God save all of us. So it's all we need to do is forward to you in addition to this. Because our emails are cited here, mine and John Allen's. Yep. Is you need the Evelyn Messiah email yes. that went to John Allen. Didn't go to anybody else because he was the one inquiring at 4.58 p.m. Friday in December. Yes. So if I get that to you, you can bring closure to all of this. Yep. I'll and we're within the 30 days of the September. Uh, I'd like to say just one second, Sue, that I encourage the public to look at this. It's, I think it's rather interesting. So uh, check it out if you're interested. Mr. Chairman, so, I'd like to have a discussion about how this could have been handled differently. The fact that we're a new board, the fact that people, you know, I'm not talking about his case, but just in general, that we're going to make mistakes. We're going to do things that aren't what yeah, are right. considered. What I would like to open it for like a five-minute discussion, how commissioners could approach other commissioners without feeling the need to go to the Attorney General's office. All right, making this uh, into a... Uh, yeah, you've Something. got a good link to the Open Media Law website, Is that, am I right? Would you like to send that out once again to the commissioners? No. no. You all know how to do Open Meeting Law Massachusetts. It'll take you right to the website. You okay, no, 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 fair enough, fair enough. Up. Okay. But as to Sue's question, Sue, of course, it, it's upsetting to be the subject of an Open Meeting Law violation and report. The thing was, is I had already with the exact commissioners that the AG's office say violated open meeting law, uh, and they continued to send emails that I knew were a violation of open meeting law. I did not report all the ones I had gotten before. And after I had asked and asked not to be, that this, this behavior stop, I wasn't taken seriously, and they kept sending me emails. So my only option after all of that discussion <coughs> was to report it. But when you were having these discussions, was it here at the meeting? Was it by email text? In other words, your discussion telling them you were not happy with I, 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 no, that. No, it place. wasn't that I was happy or unhappy. It's a violation of open meeting law. Don't send me any more emails. I only want to get an email from Pamela telling me the date and time of the meeting and here's the agenda. But don't you feel that, uh, my personal opinion is, I feel that when another commissioner comes after another com commissioner, that it, 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 it causes unharmony and, and it causes a, a not a cohesive group, that there's always a way to, to, to handle things before you, you there, take, there should have go been, to the attorney general. But there office. wasn't any way to handle it that was the only thing I could do. And the thing is, you have to understand, it's against the whole board. It's based on the behavior of two people. However, it's against the whole board. And so the, the, the point is, is that now we have a learning experience. I'm a little concerned that three people don't seem to understand open meeting a lot, even after reading these findings. It's not a matter of understanding. I just feel personally how I look at it that it could have been handled in a different way. Especially you were so new to the board when this when you wrote 
these open when you decided to go to these apparently right. I right. 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 yes. so right. was thank you Here. Risa was well within no, her no, rights no. to uh to file a complaint if that's what I was actually saving the rest of the board so yeah. And do you have a copy of the formal four pages here from the AG? Because in here, there is John's email to uh, Rich, the chairman at the time, and mine. And I, so you don't have this. I don't, but I, if I can scan it from you afterwards. You can I'll scan sure. these four pages. That's the AG's rendering of the opinion mm -hmm. with the date, with 30 days. And I have just sent you or forwarded to you the Evelyn Messiah thing okay. that John had received. Yeah. And so then it forwarded to me. That's where all this started to take shape. So yeah, we'll, get, sure we'll get, get to that. But, but I want to be sure you get this up. Sure. Now I have a question. Uh, under commissioner's discussion or board correspondence, I want to, um, I'm not sure we, I'm not sure where it comes Just go ahead, Harry. I don't know where it comes out of, but uh, I want to read a letter. And then uh, I'm submitting it. So I want to put it in the right category. Is it commissioner's discussion or should I wait till word corresponds? Mr. Uh, Chairman. What it is. So what is it, uh, something I'll read it, then you can tell me where it needs to be put. <laughs> All right. It's dated today, September 26, 2023. Mr. David Moskin, Chair of the Hadley Housing Authority Board. I joined the Hadley Housing Authority Board of Commissioners in December of 2021. By December of 2023, I will have completed two years on the board. Therefore, in December, I plan to retire from this public service position and give someone else an opportunity to contribute as an elect as elected in May of 2024. That will be the town's election coming up, unless the select board wanted to fill my position after December. But there is a five-month window. As you are aware, we are a divided board, and I am challenged to see how we can come, all come together with a cooperative spirit to successfully serve our residents. I certainly wish you and the other members of the board the very best, and most importantly, our residents of the Hadley Housing Authority. Sincerely, Harry Chad, day today. And I have to submit one of these to the town clerk in my departure of this board in December because they will either go to the select board and find my successor for the balance of my term. Uh, either they appoint someone or they put it on the ballot in May. But I would depart and retire from uh, the Housing Authority Board so you'll be in last, December. Your last meetings will be on phone in November and December when you're gone? If that's the plan. Unless you want me to go sooner, <laughs> I'll, ad I'll adapt this. Not at all. <laughs> but I will be stepping away and uh, retiring from the Thank you for your service, sir. And uh, okay. any other board correspondence? I, sorry. Any other I have Emma, okay. Um, if, it, if <coughs> you know, I go back to the question that Commissioner Chadwick asked about the write offs, so I did text Gary DePace for clarification. And it what happens, Gary, it moves from the tenant accounts receivable, which could be in the negative. Um, let me get back into my phone. And the amount that's written off goes into the 4570 account. And then when it comes in, it would come in under other revenue, and then it would it would reduce that that balance that we have in the 4570. So it's it is tripped. And then when we signed up with the Department of Revenue and the credit bureaus, each of the three housing authorities that we manage has their own individual accounts. So it would flow right through, it would never come into Amherst and then into Hadley, it goes right into the Hadley accounts. Okay. okay. Um, so the other correspondence I have is um, the WBUR report um, on public housing, the 2300 vacancies. There's a lot going on. Um, as you know, myself and Reese, and uh, I think there was eight of us from our three housing authorities went to the, um, the conference. We learned an awful lot and um, on the last day, this became a very hot topic uh, because the, because it um, it did for anybody that didn't see it. I have the mass live mass live in conjunction with WBUR um, posted that um, that same article. You have a two page. It was in the, in the Gazette, and yeah. the date of the Gazette is September twenty third. Okay, yeah. 
So um, there's lots going on there. In um, overall, we we the housing authorities were very happy that this got into the news as well because we have been trying to educate the, um, the executive office, not educate, adv uh, advocate against what was happening with Champ and fight for improvements in Champ um, in the in the whole system as a as a whole. And that's pretty much what this, that we feel vindicated, the housing authorities in the Commonwealth feel vindicated by this article because it's the bureaucrats, sorry, executive office have maybe overreached and tried to fix a system that was working and they created a monster. And now they're trying to fix it, um, which is good. So we did get a public housing notice, which David, I believe you said you, you read. And I so there's a couple of okay and respect. There's a couple of things that came out. So we do have. I, I advised you at a couple of meetings ago about a third party. Um, I'm gonna take one and pass it down. A third party vendor that the executive office has contracted with, um, contracted with, um, that is costing the Commonwealth a little over three million dollars a year. Just to these, process applications. Just to process priority applications. Yeah. Just priority applications. Um, there's, they've been working on the HVP voucher, um, which Amherst does have HVP and MRVP vouchers, and that's been a trial run. Um, it's been rocky, but they're getting better. Um, so this kind of outlines um, how, what, how they're prioritizing. I was very pleased when um, they came out with a 20, a 32 page guideline on how to do priorities. This is a the three versions, the Cliff Notes version of it. Um, and it validated what we're doing in Amherst, Belchertown, and Hadley, whereas how we're how we're vetting people. So on a daily basis, the housing authority will get an applicant that's claiming a priority from say the Eastern Mass. We'll just use Brockton as an example. That will say, I'm homeless through no fault of my own. I deserve to be bumped above everybody else that's on the wait list. And oftentimes their proof, because you have to prove these things, will be a note from mom saying they can't sleep on my couch anymore. And that's, we've never accepted that. We always have prioritized folks that are already in the court system. They have a summary process. Um, and while the person that's, it's called couch surfing in, in the industry, maybe is a, 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 a not a great situation, the person that's in housing court is truly in the eminent um, emergency situation, and you have to prioritize that. Um, and then you have people that have been on the wait list for years um, that are, that just keep getting pushed down because of all of these priorities. So they really came out with again. This is just the cliff note, the thirty-two page version. Absolutely outlines what the standard is across the Commonwealth of the of the exact verification documentation that they need to provide to to have that priority so that is going to help because it'll take it'll take away that priority from those folks and then we're going to be able to filter through to the other um to the to the other folks but there's still no priority or powerful priority for applicants who are out here in Western Mass, is that sort of what I'm hearing? No, so everybody across the Commonwealth, if, if you claim a four, you're a four, but if you are, um, it, it, then it would go to date and time stamp. So, but we seem to be getting a lot more from the Eastern part of the state because one, there's more, it's a more populated area, and two, they have more homeless shelters. So they get in the shelter system or they get with an advocacy group in Eastern Mass, and they are they flood the champ system with the applications, and it just bounces the folks down. And we and if we get a, a priority from the local area, we do have a greater chance of housing them, um, because we that, that we go through the entire application process with them. It could take, um, it should take ten days. It should take ten days, but it could take a month, two months to get all their documentation and to vet them. And then they go, wait a second, I don't want to live in Hadley. Why would I, I live in Brockton? Why am I moving to Hadley? Right. But you apply. So they're hope they're really they're putting in place a lot of different steps. Um they to stop that. They've broken up champ into uh the counties, which has already started to help. 
these folks, excuse me, vetting will hope, hopefully hope, uh, help to, um, but that's just part of the problem. And then they came out with <coughs> this new public housing notice, excuse me. So can you ask your question while I'm choking? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Personally, you know, seeing this in the news in the last month and reading it in the newspaper, I, today. yeah, that I really don't feel that that this would have that they that the state or DHC would have addressed this because of the fact of the media, you know, catching on board. We've been as tenants, we've been talking for years now. Uh, now speaking as a tenant um, about the situation, the homeless situation in the area, and the number of apartments that have been available at housing authorities. And no one, no matter who we talked to, no one wanted to listen. I don't feel that if this article didn't come out and the news didn't catch on, I think we'd be in the same situation, which is a sad commentary for DHCD, that no matter who we talked to, they were unwilling to, to speak about the situation. So I have to absolutely agree with you. I think that's true. And it's uh, the housing authorities have been pushing back since CHAMP was implemented. I mean, just last year, we were meeting with um, Representative Vilas out in Westfield um, with the Western Mass Executive Directors and then other Executive Director um, coalitions in the other parts of the Commonwealth were met meeting with their representatives trying to get some kind of change in CHAMP because it was it was slowing down the system. Um, so it, it's it's absolutely a good thing that it would it, they shined a light on it. I do have some concerns. Um, they now have an initiative for within by the end of the year to make a vast improvement. And what they did was they came out with another housing notice that says we can get uh, and we'll get more information. There's a there's a training tomorrow that we're going to be listening to about this. And it, so it's a one page. Um, notice from the acting internal um to the acting director of the public housing fatima um where they're saying we can get budget exemptions which to me what that means is i can go over budget but you're not giving me more money so we're concerned about well, yes we can go over budget and we can't get and we can't potentially get any more money i'll know more tomorrow um and that we can then reach out for help with the the screening part, the vacancy part, so the um, the maintenance turnover of the unit, and with um, applications, the mailing part. And on the back, they gave a pretty limited amount of housing authorities, and I, I would prefer not to name the housing authorities that they had in pu on public record. But if you look at that WBR art article, there's the interactive, um, map of Massachusetts that when you hover over the authorities, you can see what percentage their vacancies were at in July. So it, it's changed for all of our housing authorities and it may have changed for these people, but several of these folks are the highest, have the highest vacancy rates. So I'm not sure how they're gonna help. Pam, I just want to interject. Because of the fact that statistically, a lot of people who are homeless have substance abuse problems and mental illness. Not all, of course. Yeah. I really feel that housing authorities really need to have some sort of social worker available on in, in the facilities because of the population that's going to be mm -hmm. inundating our, uh, or coming into our housing authorities mm -hmm. because there's nobody available to speak to without going outside the housing authority. So I think that's something that they need to address. Right, and only some housing authorities have resident service coordinators. We are one that has the funding for it. As we know, we our uh, resident service coordinator, when she got her degree, went elsewhere. Um, and, but we are actively searching for another social worker. But we do use, that's when you use community partners too. So that's how typically uh, housing authorities have dealt with that. Um, and we do screen for drug use because we don't, that's not, that's a disqualifier for public housing. Um, it may be in the past, um, that if they, if they had it in their past, that's okay. But um, not everybody that's gonna come into the housing authority will be homeless. They, they, it just won't work out that way. So, so we are working on the issue. Um, I have a meeting later today with the staff to review all of this too. Um, we do, a, a good number of our units actually are maintenance ready to go, it's the CHAMP system that has been holding us back.
So that's, I have those for you under foreign correspondence. <laughs> yeah, it's a the map. We want to leave that. We've got a 10% vacancy rate here right now. Like as of today. As of today. Uh, and over at Burke, we've only that got. That includes Burke Way. Oh, that includes, okay. Yep, that includes so that's not bad at all because some of these places have 20% vacancy rate. But that be prior to um, Chino, that's not how it was. I know. Uh, uh, I understand. Hadley rarely had a turnover. Right. It's changed now. You get more turnovers. Yeah. Um, and the rest of us, we, we would go between 2 and 4%. This yeah. is a because you would have applicants ready to go. You can yeah. screen, and we don't have that ability. They took that away from us. Yeah. I'll move on to the public comments. Uh, oh, yeah. I feel what we, uh, before we before we get to public comments, yes, Mr. Chair, yes, uh, at the last meeting we voted that we would advertise for uh, executive directors. Stewart just handed me this. I think I don't know how you want to handle that and how we get to advertise. Cross the T's, dot the I's, so we don't have any violations of anything. How do you want to handle that? Am I, am I correct in that? How, yeah, that? How do we have to handle this? So? As far as the advertising goes, um, yeah, we'd like to, you know, begin yeah. advertising soon. So you, there's a, I gave you the booklet. Of yeah, the we understand page. that, but we it wanted absolutely to know, when do we have to announce it in a meeting that we would like to start soon, and then let you know the exact date that we decide to start. Advertising. So that would be that sounds like a full board um, discussion, yeah. in that it would require a vote. So That's that would have to be on it right. would have to be on the agenda. Because so because on. part of the discussion was supposed to include a budget yes. for yes. advertising, but that was never done. So we can't. Yeah, advertise. we know that. That's why we're. That's why I know, but that's what I'm saying. So, so we have to uh, on the agenda. So it has to be on next time we did that. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, guys? All right, public comments, everybody, everybody. Need to get a vote to adjourn. I'll have a better day. I'll wait. Yeah. No, I'll be back. Oh, no comment. No comment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No comment. Do you want to comment? No, you said it all. Listen to this. So if you want to pause it until we get back, we're just going to set it up. Oh, do I say that? Should be fine if we start to do it. Well, yeah, we're going to set it Find a date yeah. for next meeting. Yeah, date for next meeting, guys. Last Tuesday. Last Tuesday at 11. What's the date? That's October. Shopping. So, Pam, will I just go turn this into uh, Jessica? Yes, yeah. And then she'll handle whatever she's got to do. She'll bring out the select board. We're still yeah. yeah. October 24th at 11 a.m. Oh, and we need an email first. You got it. Yeah. Thank you. At the next meeting, I don't know what you and Reese like to highlight some of the important things that you heard at the conference so or that would be good yeah there was a lot of it just, yeah it was actually very overwhelming really? <laughs> there was a lot yeah well if you could yeah. highlight a couple of things that you think madly would pertain to happy that would be uh yeah. Yeah. Today conference or so it's it actually it starts sunday night and sun, uh, <clears throat> sunday this time we actually had a round table for ed's commissioners yes, and staff and so it's and, and, and then there was a speaker at dinner so it started sunday and then it went right through Wednesday morning with a, just a, a Wednesday morning was pretty brief before it went into um, uh, mass, uh, the certified hearing officer for the first vote in that state. Uh, but it was, it was Monday and Tuesday were jam packed with sessions. And originally the next meeting like that is going to be at UMass, right? Yeah. March 26th. So uh, I think it's you may not still be on the right Oh, come on. <laughs> so, uh, so October 24th is our next meeting at 11. Okay. That's okay. Mr. Motion Chief, to Mr. adjourn. Yes. Would, is there any possible way that we could meet in an executive session to discuss the uh, advertising? Of the no, I don't think that fits the executive session. Uh, There's only 10 reasons for our executive session, and that's not one of them. But the only reason is, is we we have to wait a whole month into the next meeting. 
I don't understand why uh, you can have a special meeting, but yeah, you well, can't have an executive session. Well, could we uh, could we schedule a special meeting? Then? I'm waiting a whole month for this since Harry is leaving in December. You know, I'm happy to schedule a special meeting to discuss the right. the search. So, uh, When's the monthly meeting? October twenty fourth yes. at eleven. Yes, and that's a Tuesday. Right. Okay. Now, what do you now? What's next? So, do you have a date in mind? Could we just stay or read a half an hour earlier? Uh, special meeting? Talk or half an hour later? Or do what special meeting? Well, I mean, you don't have a date for special meeting. So, what I don't know, open it up for discussion. <laughs> well, would you like to suggest a date for a special meeting? Any day in particular good for people? Morning, afternoon, evening? What's your morning, preference? Mornings. Morning, morning, like mornings, mornings, mornings. Mornings are best for me. All right. How about um, a week or two? That's, the, That's what October looks like. Does anybody, do you have anything in particular that you can't come in particular? I got three, four days. I, I see I have conflicts. But okay. That doesn't mean I can't come. What we know is Tuesday, since we have these meetings on Tuesday, is Tuesday a good day for people? How about if we do it Tuesday a week from now? What will be the date? Be October 3rd. So we get back to you and, and look at our calendars and see if that's yeah. worth. Um, okay, yeah. we can post it off, off the camera. Yeah, sure. But tentatively, you want to say October 3rd at uh, 11 o'clock? That sounds good. How, how is it for the rest of you? Fine. October 3rd, 11 a.m. to discuss so, the so, so, How does this get posted? Okay, okay. Just like the right one. Well, it would be it would be posted as a special meeting, but yeah. just to say my 48 hours notice with the and agenda. on the agenda, this would be the uh, item. Right. So it would be I think I would think we would talk about the budget and um, the process. Maybe we should also uh, look at at this meet, this special meeting. Look at forming a subcommittee. I mean, you you want to be on a subcommittee? Like you could take charge and with one other person looking at all the rules and the rigs. I mean, good luck with that. Well, we did. I mean, I did read, but you know. Yeah, but but yeah, if you could, you know, maybe we should just have a a subcommittee who would take on. That's fine. Anybody wants to work That's on That's what I thought. But we, since you're on the other subcommittee, I thought I, I don't want to be on it. I thought okay. Larry and my, myself could be on it. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. You're the subcommittee, <laughs> but we'll still have a special meeting. So hopefully. So we're going to have a special <laughs> meeting on October third at eleven o'clock, unless we yes, go home and realize. Yes. I hope you'll have a special meeting. Or, or you know what? It, instead of us doing it, all of us on October third. Why don't the two of you? You can't do that. Yes. No, nope, can't well, do it. Yeah, because now you're forming the subcommittee. Uh, okay, so let's form the subcommittee yeah. on October 3rd so the rest of us don't, don't have to. to. Just form the subcommittee. Yeah, like no, no, not legally. We have to do that on October 3rd. No, I don't think so. Uh, what I'd like it's you to do is get your, I'll call it your act together so you understand what the steps are to do this kind of search. David, we cannot form a subcommittee that was not on the agenda for discussion. And we cannot do that until the meeting on October 3rd. We can't do it, don't do it. It's a problem. It's open meeting law. Okay? Mm -hmm. But they can get going on that. I'm going to disagree with you. I, okay. think can, I think we can form a subcommittee, even though it was not on the agenda. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and file open meeting law, we can go for it. No, of course not. I'm saying just don't do it. <laughs> Okay, we can form it again or for the first time on October what, 3rd. Why, may I ask a question? Why do we need a subcommittee? You're having the special meeting to discuss the ad, the budget, but it doesn't need really a subcommittee. It's semantics, isn't it? You two guys are working on it, so. So if, if you read the PHN, which is quite lengthy, they do advise that you have a subcommittee for, for hiring. But the board, the board has to authorize, you have to have a, a vote to have the subcommittee, and then that gives them the authority to then work with whoever you're going to work with to get these things posted. And then the subcommittee would do um, the interviewing 
of the candidates that okay. they're going and then they would bring recommendations to the board for, board, for yeah. further interviews. Okay. Before the October 3rd special meeting, mm -hmm. how do we find out about what monies are available so we can figure out? First, find out what how much ads cost it, where we want to place your ads. Right. Or, or you All right. And then we'll come no, 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 you don't get to decide. The HCD tells you where you're going to put Well, that, that was their, that was from the list. Okay, good. Because there, there's wasn't my long decision. It was from long their long list of things that you have to look right. for. Right. And it must be posted for two weeks. Could you guys work on the budget then? How much money we'll need to advertise? Okay. Well, we just need to find out what the ads are going to cost for yeah. the respective papers right. that the DAC, LC, said that you whatever and the budget i'm assuming is coming out of the reserve money okay because all the other line items have no budgets budget. and that's not a blind exactly. exactly and i'll tell you that's not always that's classified uh, classified as because you're already members of website yep yeah, so that's free so that's that really special on our website yep on yep. um, that's now website yeah mass narrow website is free you should just say yeah okay, okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Yeah, second. 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 20 some odd years ago, I was a lot younger and enthusiastic. The people that are in here that don't come to the meetings, too bad they don't have a tennis association. That is too bad, really, it is, because you're getting none of that input. I agree. What do you think, Sue? You know what I'm talking about. Don't get up and leave. I wasn't. I, I wasn't. I wasn't. And well, it appeared that way. Uh, it's, what are you trying to say? I mean, I'd like to have a t tennis organization for the sake of the tennis. We would too, and and executive office would like us to have one too. Yeah. Well, how are you going to get that going when you unless we can't get it going? The tenants no. have to get it going, and we have one for many Our years. We got it going. We were uh, young people. We just did. Yeah. And we didn't have such a divided community. Yes, we do. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And because that makes us going to be very difficult. Maureen, I have advocated that since we don't have a, a local tenants organization here, that some of us are stepping down, tenants should sit here. The tenants should run this board because it's your complex. You're, you live here. We don't. May I make a suggestion? And it, it, so we do so much going on here and what it like this morning. Yeah, you know, I sat at my breakfast watching what was going on down front. Yeah. And what in the hell was going on down front? I mean, there were trucks and cars and people that I've never seen that don't live here. It was the same thing live here and I couldn't see that one. We had the physical eviction. Today? Today. This morning. Yeah, that's how we had the we got the we gained the unit back. Oh, I can't say who it was. I won't say who it was, but it was again somebody that owes close to eight thousand dollars worth of. Oh, so they were evicted. That's what all the yeah. It was on the board when it was yeah. not like it is now. Anything we, well, tenants could do to form a tenants organization would be fantastic. I just think that's an important factor that is not taken into consideration. But as you said, the population here is different than before. And we, yeah, we were a lot, a lot, lot of young people. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And we were extremely happy. The table underneath is fine. I'm now too old for it. And where are there are the young people? He went, well, I guess not it. on the board like here. She was almost elected, right? She ran a good campaign. I, mean, that mean, I would think that that would be an answer for them. Okay. I've been heard in the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. All will adjourn. Thank you.